This is Drom Shakasuto. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like this video. There are certain things in life that when you start with them, you don't know how to stop. And to seek for the Creator and to ask for Hashem, this is something that that brings you to a place that no snowball in the world is, uh, is flying so fast. So you can ask yourself, how come certain people that started their journey in a certain point and they stuck and they have not developed so well and achieved so much it's only because that they flew out from the race very fast. They became religious or Haredim or many kinds of, 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 they became happy, they became wealthy, they became rich, they, they found themselves, they connected themselves to their aura, to Buddha, I don't know, <laughs> nonsense, imaginations. There is only one truth, and the truth is flying. Father in heaven is with you 24-7, and you need to reconnect yourself to Him in every second of your life, and if you think you achieved something, you're out of the race. You're out. You can be Chabadnik, you can be a Breslever Hasid, you can be a Litvish, you can learn in the highest, the Shiva of them all, in Brooklyn, in, in Boro Park. You're out of the race. If you're not seeking for the Creator with all of your heart, with a flaming, firing heart, with a holy desire to learn more and to humble yourself and to understand and what does it mean, and how come, and why I'm not understanding it, and when I will, and what's going to happen. If you're not like that, sticking with your, with, your, with your fingernails, climbing walls of, 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 of fire, of ice, one day at a time, one hour at a time, you're out of the race, you're out of the game. You can pretend to be religious, you can pretend to be Hasid, you can pretend to be from, from birth, you can pretend to be whatever. You are not anything when you're not running and chasing after Hashem. The verse is saying that we're asking from the Creator, Moshcheni acharecha narutza, please Help us, pull us, that we're going to run after you. And the next verse is saying, And then the king brought me to his rooms. Only when you're asking Hashem Barach, please, I want to run after you. Because Hashem, Hashem, He created the speed, speeding bullet. Hashem, the Creator, He created, invented the world. The speed of light is an invention of Hashem. It's something that Hashem made. Hashem is above the speed of light. Speed of light is slow motion for Hashem. Hashem is above time. You cannot speed up. You just need to put all your power and then Hashem is going to look at your intention on your heart and He is going to bring you closer. You cannot come closer to Hashem. It not depends on you. For sure that it not depend on the Hasidut that you are connected to in the community that you're part of. That's all nonsense. That's all baloney. It's all shtuyot. We say in Hebrew. Nonsense. Nothing. Nothing at all. All of your closeness to the Creator depends in the purity of your heart. That's it. Rachmana libabai. The Creator, the Merciful One, He wants to see your heart. Okay. What's your intention? Amazing books are open in front of you in the most biggest and illuminating place in the world, the yeshiva on the peak of the world, in the peak of Pico. <laughs> Nonsense. <laughs> doesn't matter, doesn't count anything. You can be the high priest in the temple of the Creator 2,000 years ago 
and, and, to, and to do things against Hashem, and to sin, and to drop Judaism, and to fly out like, like a kite. Why? Because your heart is not there anymore. But your heart, if it's pure, if your heart is full with passion to the Creator, so from the swamps of despair and black bitterness, you're going to climb out and going to see the light. Because the holiness of your soul will shine from within and will nurture your body and will feed you with wisdom and advice from inside that you will know how to jump above the highest mountains and to fly faster than the speed of light and nothing in the world will stop you. And it depends only in your inner connection because why inner? Why it have to be inner? Because you are a person as a creation, as a human being, that you receive your life from within, from inside. You're alive based on an inner source of energy that you can't put your finger on it. It's not the heart, it's not the brain, it's not the, the spine, it's not part of your organs, it's not one of your organs, it's not one of the physical organs. It's something that comes from within, from where you can't. The Nazis, they tried to cut us to slices, they were slicing us, like you, you're slicing sausages, and like, you know, you, they, they cut us like, like cold cuts, and they couldn't find it. They were dissecting us and cutting every cell and putting it under the microscope with lights, the biggest science over there were investigating our noses, our ears, our eyes, our brains, everything to see how come that animal is not afraid of the fire? How come those crazy Hasidim are dancing in the gas chambers? What's going on? How come they're going so calmly and so polite into the burning fire? How can they be happy and saying Kiyat Shema, screaming to the Creator, Shema Israel, we accept Hamas, this death. The, the officers over there were losing their minds. Those are known, known stories, famous stories. There was one group of Hasidim. It's funny, it's so crazy that it, it, it makes you laugh. A group of Hasidim that found themselves with their Rebbe, with their teacher, in the guest chambers. And the officers, the Nazis, are closing the gates, the, the, the doors, and locking. But they hear them talking from inside and keep on whatever. And that rabbi is calling all of his students, and they're standing in the gas chambers, sitting in front of their teacher. And that teacher is telling them, oh, boy, Sai, my students, now it's the time that we're all waited for. And this is the time that we're going to accept on ourselves the yoke of heaven in a complete way. We're going to achieve completion in all of that service that we served all of our lives. Now we're going to keep that mitzvah of dying for the Creator, to respect Him, His name. And it's such an important mitzvah, it's such a huge thing and privilege that I'm warning you that you're not going to fail in the sin of arrogance. That you won't be proud of yourselves on dying for Hashem. Humble yourself. And He's rebuking them that they will be humble now while being executed with that pure intention of dying for the name of the Creator. It's crazy. Officers that couldn't stop that execution but they ran away from the Nazi army and they converted, told that story. Two officers that ran away from the army after hearing those voices from that gas chamber. They ran away from the army and they converted because they realized that those people in that gas chamber were not real people, not normal people. <laughs> Something is wrong with them. It's sick, it's crazy. And I know I'm sick, I know I'm crazy, there's no <laughs> doubt. We're crazy, we're lunatic people. And not all Jews are like that. You cannot say, okay, I'm Jewish, I'm like, I don't know. I met some very weak, pathetic Jews in my life that were ready to sell their brothers, that were ready to sell their sisters, that took advantage of their mm -hmm. siblings, that were horrific people. Horrific, not terrific. Horrible people. I saw some horrible people that today they will be called Jews. There are many, many people. I'm asking you who you are. Inside of you, who lives? 
Your soul, which color holds? Who are you in your nature, in the nature of your soul? Are you a warrior? Are you a fighter? Are you ready to fight for the truth? If you are, so you're crazy. So welcome. <laughs> we gathered here tonight. It's a group. We can all share. Everyone can talk. It's not 12 steps, but everyone can share. <laughs> we can climb the ladder together. It's the Jacob ladder. We're climbing. I love you. You're sick in your minds. That's why you came to my class. I really appreciate it. I'll tell you the truth from the bottom of my heart. Welcome. It's here. Yes, yes. Thank you for coming, joining us. It's a conversation, it's a group therapy, we're all... <laughs> we're talking about it, it's okay. In reality, we are not made out of flesh and bones, even though that we're covered with a very thick body, with a very strong and powerful body. But the truth is that who that you are is is the look of your eyes, is, is someone that you can sense that lives inside of you. That's who that you really are. You're not your face, you're not your nose, you're not your eyes, you're not your hair, you're not your nation, you're not your religion, you're not your name even. Moshe. So what does it mean? Okay, Moshe. Mm -hmm. What does it mean? You can be a criminal Moshe, everyone will be terrified of you, and you can be an angel Moshe, and everyone gonna admire you, and you're gonna bless people, and they will be blessed because of you. And you can be Stephen and to have the same powers. And who knows who you are because the Creator, He will give you power corresponding to the effort and the intention of your heart. So your name is not important and also your religion is not important. Because even the, Ta the Tana de Bilyau, the holy book that had been written by the prophet Elijah, he's telling one of the speeches of Elijah. And he's saying over there that Elijah makes an oath and he makes the heaven and earth to swear with him that what that he is saying, because they were in that amazing um, act of creation, they were first. Bereshit bara Elohim et ha-shamayim ve'et ha-aretz. In the beginning, the Creator, he created heaven and earth, the sky and the land. So. Elijah the prophet took those two that were here from the beginning that they will testify on the real potential of every person. And he's taking them to be his witnesses to make that oath with him that it doesn't matter at all who you are, that the divine spirit means an inner access to the ancient archives, the ancient archives of wisdom of the Creator, to know it all, to understand everything about every situation, to have an inner access to the wisdom of the world of beyond, from, from the world to come, from heaven, from before of creation. He is saying, Elijah the prophet, testifying, that it doesn't matter who you are, if you're a Jew or a non-Jew, if you're a man or a woman, if you're a slave or a free person, the Divine Spirit will hover on the person, means that you'll have that amazing access to his soul, through his soul, to the ancient archives of the Creator, and it will depend only in the purity of his intentions, in the intention of his heart, corresponding to that, the Divine Spirit will hover on him. Can be the, the most, the farthest person of them all, a person that never heard about the Bible, that doesn't have no understandings about Judaism. He doesn't even feel related to those customs, to those, but his heart is full of passion to be good. And he will never gonna give up on that. And the Creator will speed His development process in such a speed, to such heights, that no one ever been to those places before of Him. And only because the, the Creator sensed in the heart of that person that He is dedicated for the truth, big time. So now, all of your judgments on yourself, the criticism, the negative thoughts that you have about yourself, they're all false. 
They're all lies. They're all mistakes. Because you're judging yourself because of certain situations that took place in your physical life. Because to your inner spiritual soul, to who that you really are, to your spiritual level, tell me if I'm wrong. You're not aware to. You don't know who you are. You don't really know how close you are in that Jacob ladder to the Creator. You don't know where you're standing. You don't know if the Creator chose you to do something in His world, if you're one of the dearest ones to Him, if your hard hours, the one that for you represent the failures of your life, maybe those hard times built for you a vessel to contain certain bounty because of the humility, because of the shames, and because that you never gave up on your, yourself, on the truth, on your love, on your desire to do good, on your honesty. Maybe certain things that you said or you did in life bought for you a very honorable seat in heaven, very, very close to the inner circles of the Creator. Like we said before, there is no one in the world that can climb up on that mountain. There is no one. The Creator is warning, that they won't destroy themselves while trying to climb up to Hashem. In the beginning of my tshuva, when I tried in the beginning to come closer to the Creator, so one of the first messages that I received was that I must learn Torah. And it's true. Every person should learn Torah. The most divine book that ever been written in the world. No doubt about it. Fantastic book. And only the beginning. Because from that book, that trunk, such amazing, fantastic branches are going out to the world. You have the Mishnayot, and you have the Gmarot, and you have such amazing books that have been written by righteous people, and explanations of righteous people on the verses, and all the prophets, and the 24 books. And you have amazing, amazing knowledge and stories from here till heaven. And Midrashim, ancient hand scripts of righteous people that have been written with blood and with tears and sweat and, 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 and books that could have been burned and been saved by a miracle. And you have books that have been written by an angel like Raziel the Angel book. And more books that no one can describe the Zohar Kadosh and fantastic books of Kabbalah. Every person that have a heart will see that, that, that treasure and, and, and will be amazed. <clears throat> Torah, amazing, great. But it's written on the Torah that it's amazing, that it's beautiful. But that it depends in the person's actions. If he purified himself enough or not, it depends in that if he will be able to drink from the Torah the potion or life or lethal poison that will kill him. Because it's written, Zaha, if he purified himself, cleaned himself, achieved a certain merit from heaven, Naset lo samchaim. So the learning in the Bible and in all of those fantastic books that connected to it, that are coming out from it, if he got the merit and he is learning Torah, so then the Torah will become for him samchaim, potion of life. It will give him life. It will heal him. It will heal his spirit. It will give him emotional power, strength, and, and wisdom. It will build him. And not only him, all of his beloved ones. Wise scholars are the ones that know how to go and to make peace between friends. They're going and making peace between husband and wife. They're talking calmly and quietly. They have good attributes. They know how to behave. They have manners. Their children are educated. You see their children, you say, wow, look at them. I'm jealous. I, I wish that my children would be like that. I want my house to be like his house. And you desire to become like him. So their light is shining in the world. But from the other side, you have certain scholars that except of going to the side and puke, there's nothing else you can do. You can't stand their smell. You can't stand in the same bus with them. They're not taking showers. Manners is something that they never heard of in their lifetime. They know how to curse better than someone that grew up in the worst slums of L.A. And 
What you're going to do? They also sit eight hours every day with the Gemara in the Beit Midrash. So, how come? How can it be? Because if you have not purified your actions, the Mishnah is saying, Lo zachach na'aset lo samavet. So the same learning in the same Beit Midrash, from the same books, from the mouths that, that are speaking the Torah, same rabbis taught those two people, but the Torah that he is watering himself with becomes to be a lethal poison, not only for him, that he's dying, drowning in the sin of arrogance, thinking to himself that he is such a scholar, that his life and the world to come are guaranteed and promised to him for sure, and there is no competition, and he's above every, everyone, because he is part of this legacy, and that family, and belongs to that community, and his Rebbe told him this and that, and he feels so connected and safe, and the truth is, that he's not only completely poisoned and impure, he's contaminating and destroying all of his family, especially his wife, and then all the rest of the circles that are meeting them and saying, me, I will never gonna be like that one. I will never gonna keep Shabbat. I will never gonna have beard, I'm never gonna cover my head, won't have side curls, won't wear tzitzit, because of that disgusting person. If that's Judaism, if that's the pe those are the people that are serving Hashem so-called, I don't want to have nothing with them. How can it be? They're both learning in the same place, same books. Your success depends on the purity of your heart, in the intention of your heart while sitting and start dedicating your life to your actions, to do what you need to do. You had righteous people that were working in the mines. You had righteous people that never enjoyed money from no one else and they were working for their living. You had righteous people that never worked one day in their lives and they were just with their mind in the books. So how are you going to find the path? How are you going to know if you need to dedicate your life to work or to dedicate your life to learning, dedicate your life to do hit body do yot, individual prayers in the fields, maybe fasting, maybe closing your eyes, maybe flying to Uman, maybe going to the Ohel in New York. How are you going to know? You need to ask yourself, what is building me? Do I have the vessel to do this? Do I have the vessels to do that? Who am I? What is my mission in this world? I've been created with a certain nature, with a certain height, with a certain size, with certain abilities, certain talents, certain connection. That's my family. Am I allowed to destroy them? Am I allowed to ignore them? Am I supposed to walk in that path? Maybe I shouldn't. Maybe I should. Those are questions that no rabbi in the world can answer you. Those are questions that you need to aim straight to yourself, to stare into your own eyes and to be a strong person to deal with reality, with the truth. Are you able to dedicate your life to the Torah? And will it really going to bring you to those awesome, fantastic places? Did you felt after learning Torah that really it rises you? It gave you wings to fly? Were you really an angel after that? Or that you were an angel only when you were learning and when you came back home you became the angel of death for your wife? It's not allowed. Your wife, she's also a person that wants to live. Your children are also people that wants to enjoy a father. They never born to this world with a desire to be the children of the Rebbe, of the Rebbe, of the Rabbi. They want to be a children of their father. Your husband, she got married with you because she wanted you to be her husband, her best friend in the world. She never wanted to marry the rabbi. No, that was not her dream. And if you're a woman, it's the same. You want to come closer to Hashem, and you want to pray, and you want to be spiritual. Great, but your kids, they must eat lunch. Something. They need a hug. They need someone to sit with them and to tell them stories. You cannot let yourself be swallowed not to your career 
and not to your religion and not to your dreams. The reason that people are drowning in that imagination of becoming someone that they're not is only because that people are afraid to deal with their earliest traumas from their emotional pain. They're afraid to deal with reality, that they are a little bit lazy, that they are a little bit scared, that they're terrified from life, that they don't know how they're going to cover their expenses, that they don't have a clue how to deal with relationships, with growing children, with taking them to the doctors and making sure that they will be healthy and, 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 and receive the right treatments, without knowing how to buy shoes and how to support your family, that weakness of people, not knowing how to deal with themselves, with their real, real condition, it pushes them to try to fake an imaginary reality for themselves. They're creating an outlet to escape for their lives. And the nicest thing of them all is to compare to yourself that you're an angel, that you're an idol, that you're someone to worship, that you're fantastic, that everyone needs to support you, that everyone must respect you. It's an imagination. People that are chasing after honor, the honor is running away from them. Only people that are running away from honor, the honor is chasing them. Only people that knows how to respect other people are respectable. People that desire honor are disgusting and humiliated. They're nothing. They're not worthy even to look at their faces. When people are desiring, they have lusts and desires and bad attributes. They're self self selfish and they're ignorant, self-centered. You can't stand them. You cannot be with them in the same place. You feel rejected. You want to be alone. You want to be not with them. And when you are acting like that, so that's the reason why people are not being attracted to you, why people are rejecting you, why people don't feel like helping you, building you, supporting you, because you are demanding, because you're possessing, because you're trying to take something in force. Only when you realize that you're on a mission and that your mission is a mission to work on yourself, to become a better person, to be nice to everyone, never to be angry. And I'm talking to myself right now. Like we said, it's a group therapy. After I'm going to finish, the next one will stand up and going to talk. We're all going to sit and listen. It's a long night. Baruch Hashem, there is drinks, food, everything. I'm doing tshuva right now. I'm judging myself right now. I'm looking into my own bones right now and trying to fix myself, admitting between me to myself in my thoughts on my lackings, on being too hard on my wife, on being too hard on my children, on being too strong with my radical thoughts, on being so crazy and ignoring the sides. And I'm doing tshuva in front of your eyes. And that's what that you need to do with yourselves. You need to be strong and brave to look deep into your own soul and to fight with your nature, to break it to pieces, to become that person that you know that you are within from inside. The one that you are, the light of your soul, the good personality that you are. Not the manners that you bought, not the wisdom that you achieved, not your life experience, your real nature your gentle nature, the light of your soul, to be who that you are. There are people that are afraid to laugh in public. There are people that are afraid to blow their nose, afraid to sneeze. It cannot be like that. I was talking to a person once, she was talking to me like that with her hand, hiding her teeth, hiding her mouth. There was nothing wrong with her except of her foreign thoughts, negative thoughts, can't talk. There are people that are not walking straight in the street. They're walking like that because of their nose. They're afraid that you're going to look at their nose from the side. So all day long they're walking like that. That you, 
It's not a joke. People are suffering because people humiliated them, because people destroyed their self-esteem. People are walking with hats, people are shaving their beards, people are, are dressing in black, are, are, people are doing whatever it takes not to be humiliated by their environment. Eating too much or not eating at all, taking drugs or not taking drugs, drinking, not drinking, watching television, posting themselves, understanding what's going on, opening pages on Instagram, whatever. Who are you? Are you really who that you are? If you meant, and that's the mission of your life, really, to go out, to be out there in the social media, like me, you know, I have a page in all social media outlets. But what's the joke? I don't even have the passwords. I don't even know how to go into those places. To my assistant, it took three months to teach me how to get into the live stream on Facebook. I still don't know how to set the location of the events. But I'm going to learn. I'm going to learn. What a time. I have a weak mind. It takes me a while. Thank God that when I was a child, I saw thousands and thousands of Hollywood movies. That's how I bought my English. And that's it. Thank God. I'm all good. Hashem helped me. Hashem provided me with the right life experience. I didn't know why I was watching Rambo 200 times. I don't know. I don't know. I didn't know. Now I know. Now I know. Because when you're in America, you need to, to have the tools, you need to deal with reality. But back then, Hashem, He knows who you are. And you need to connect yourself to your real being, to the nature of your creation, to who that Hashem made you to be, because that it's amazing. Because that who that you are, exactly who that you are, with those eyebrows, with those eyelashes, with that hair, with that height, in that weight, with that accent, with that religion, from that nation, and all, and especially from that neighborhood, in that piece of land, and why? Hashem knows why. But it's important, and not only that it's important, it's so perfect, it's so great, it's so huge, it's so big, it means so much in levels that we're not even aware to, aware of. You don't know what it means when you, with your accent, with your height, with your weight, after eating that specific lunch, gonna open your mouth, driving Uber from one place to the other, calling the Creator while being late to a meeting. You don't know what's going on in that Uber because you don't know who that driver is and how your prayer is gonna affect you his great-grandchildren 20 years from today. You don't know how the Creator runs His world. It's fantastic. It's above nature. It's divine. It's not from this world. All the particles are running in a system. All the cells are getting one into each other like the waves. Like the drops of water that are nurturing and feeding the ground and you can't tell, you don't know. That drop of water, the Creator is moving it in His world for more than 5,770 what years? I don't remember. The Creator is running the system and those water are rising and steaming and then falling and then another flower is growing and then another cow is eating it and it's going and disappearing and coming and going and coming and going and the Creator, He knows the path of that drop. The Creator, He knows exactly to tell you how that drop of water came to this, this cup right now. There is a story. There is a story for every drop, for every cell, there is a story. And what's my connection? And you have a different connection because you just need to see it. And they need to see it through the screen. And it means something. It's not empty things. Everything holds a spark of soul. The soul of the creation is the Creator Himself, dressed in coverings, <clears throat> covered with outfits of colors, of smells, of sounds. And it's Him. 
dressing himself for us to bring us to completion that is so divine and high that it's unbearable for us to understand those details. It's so high and so huge. So a wise person, he will be quiet, he will be silent. Maybe I need to learn from him. <laughs> and he will stare, he will look, he will observe, he will breathe, he will try to think, okay, so I can't see the whole picture, by, but I can play along. I can try to nullify myself to it. I can try to cooperate with the Creator. So he will try to ask himself, okay, what is my role in this game? What is my mission? Who am I? Now I know I have the ability to work with numbers. I know I have a great memory. I know I have the ability to talk to people. I know I'm the best editor of video or clips in, 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 my, my, in, in, in my school. Okay, whatever. Use that talent. Think, okay, what will Hashem want from me with my tools? I'm the best mother in the world, but I'm the worst cook. Okay, think, how can you benefit others with your ability? There are women that they are the best chefs in the world, but they cannot be a mother. They don't know how to do it. So make a vlog. So call that friend of yours. Share. Give her an advice. Do something. Express your talents. Uncover your treasures that have been treasured by the Creator inside of your stiff and tough body. Loosen up a little bit. Let your soul shine exactly in the shades of the color of your own nature. Don't try to imitate others. You're never going to make it. It's never going to happen. You're not going to succeed. The evil inclination tries all day long to make you feel bad about yourself and that you're always going to try to think how to be like someone else. Always! Like that movie star, uh, superstar, or like that um, supermodel, or like that billionaire, or like that righteous rabbi. It's not important. As long as you are not complete with who that you are, you are still trapped in that net of that snake. Damn snake, we need to say. That makes you feel bad about yourself. Disrespecting yourself, blaming yourself on your failures, so to speak. They are not your failures. This is your journey. This is who that Hashem sent you to be. You need to learn from your life experience how to become that one that Hashem, the hand of Hashem made you to be. He chose your community, your neighborhood, your house, your school, that public school. He chose those parents, those siblings. He chose your height, your colors, your accent, your thoughts, your fears, your trauma. He chose everything for you and from that moment and on, always in the present, only right now, always, because the past, it passed already. And the future is not here to play with. You live only in this moment, and only also tomorrow you will live right now. Tomorrow will not take place tomorrow. Tomorrow, when you'll get there, you will be there right now. It will always gonna be in the present. You live only in the present, with Hashem, that His name is the present, Havaya Baruchu, the blessed present. That's the meaning of one of His names, Havaya. Havaya means that He is with you now. That's Him. He is the now. He is reality. He is the truth. Connect yourself to reality, to your condition, to life to the present, and be who that you are, who that He made you to be, because He made you to be that one that you are right now. 
exactly who that you are right now. So now be one with Him. Think about Him. Don't divide yourself from Him. Don't disconnect yourself from Him. Uncover your real emotions. Express your real thoughts between you to yourself. It doesn't mean explode yourself on your family. Kill your friends and run away to the mountains. No. Deal with your emotions. Do you feel that they are not the right environment for you? Okay. Do something with it. It doesn't mean attack. Think. Feel. Don't ignore your feelings. Don't ignore your heart. Don't ignore your emotions. Think, okay, as a child of the Creator, as an honest creation, as a powerful human being that suffers right now, that goes through something, that is terrified in this situation, what should I do? Now you're sober. Now you are awake. When you're thinking, when you are connected to who that you are, now you're alive. Now you are with the Creator. Now you live eternal life. Now you live forever. In this moment, you live forever. Because this moment, you live this moment like you're going to live in the world to come. You live right now forever. Do you know what I can do with your souls right now? You don't know. <laughs> you don't know where I can take you right now. You've just been hypnotized by the most powerful... No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I can really take you to live this moment. I just still don't have the permission from heaven to do that. You know why? Because Hashem wants me to do that on public TV in front of 200 million people in prime time. <laughs> so when that moment is going to come, we will all going to rise to live forever. I'm telling you, it's going to happen. You just felt it. I felt it too. It's going to happen. That's how the redemption is going to come. We will all just going to rise, going to go up, from this dimension, from this world, how that it seems to us right now, when we're under the power of imagination, to reality. That it's all really spiritual. That it's all Hashem. That there is nothing <coughs> except of Him. And we all going to become 100% united, connected with love and peace and harmony. Can someone now hurt each other here in this room? Now someone can do something wrong to someone else? No, it can't be. Why? Why? Can you hurt her? Can you insult her? Why? Can you do something wrong now to someone? Here now, in this moment, in this room. No. Why? Because there is peace and love and honor and respect, completion between us, unity. But we're still inside of our own shells, inside of our own bodies. But when that moment will come and we will receive that permission from heaven to make a change, to bring redemption to the world, it will all going to be cancelled. And we're not going to lose our shapes, we're not going to lose our bodies, we're not going to lose our vehicles and our cars, our houses. We will all just going to be in a different place in our hearts, in our minds. And we're never going to be sick again. And we're not going to die again. And no one will be evil anymore. And only good will rise from within. From your soul and from his soul, from her souls. And the people that will reject, that they won't have the will to nullify themselves and to flow into that amazing redemption, they will argue and will fight and they will suffer so much that they will die in their own sins. And they will be buried underground in the same time that we will rise. They will disappear and melt into the foundation of creation. You're not going to see them anymore because they were never belonged to <coughs> our life. They were never really walking between us. They were the shadows that were terrifying us. 
They were the tools that the Creator was using to test our faith and to wake us up to see how far we still are. But when that moment will come, the time of redemption, the darkness will disappear from the world and the night will shine like the day and you'll have the access to all kinds of wisdom and the power of understanding will grow and never gonna stop its rising. And the sun will rise forever. And you won't have to pay when you go to the cinemas and everyone will be generous and they get invited to every restaurant and the food will always be delicious. And now we're going to go to the commercials. <clears throat> really, I love you. You don't know how much I love you. This is really, now, now it's my time to finish my, my, my confession. <coughs> I just love you. I'm, I'm like, I'm sick about you all. I'm, I'm crazy from love. That's me. I'm a giant teddy bear. <laughs> I just really love you. And that's why Hashem gives me that power to access to your souls and to give you that knowledge. It's not me. It's Hashem talking to you. Don't follow me. I'm nothing in your life. Your souls are receiving information. Your souls are waking up. There are people that are not able to hear that speech. That's why they cannot stand here. That's why you cannot sit here. They, they don't have the ability. It's going to annoy them. Especially rabbis. They would jump from the window. Not able to accept the fact that we're all good. That we're all one that we're all holy. It's too hard for people to accept the fact that you're also awesome. Because if you're awesome, so why, 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 why are you going to respect me? Why that you're going to support me? Why that you're going to... If you're also fantastic, so I need now to, to respect you. Nah, that, it's too much. Sorry. I was learning for the last 40 years, and you, who are you? Okay, so... Those kind of people are holding back the redemption. But now it's a problem because I received a green light from heaven and we're out there big time. And every video is running to thousands and thousands of people and it's only growing. And it's really based on one person's love to each other. And I'm meeting people that are similar to me. Students of mine are telling me, I'm thinking about things and in the evening class you're speaking on my thoughts, on, on the thoughts that I had today. And no, it's not my divine spirit. I'm not thinking, I really, I'm not aware to your houses, to your thoughts. I'm not in your minds. I'm not. Thank God. <laughs> I'm not. Just Hashem made us all to be together. Spiritually, like we explained before. We think that we're divided. You think that you went into that office and Rav Dror was not there. You're right, I wasn't there physically, but spiritually Hashem is taking us like a wave, the wave itself. Think now at a, a wave. That wave now when you see Him over there, it looks this, like the same wave, but the particles, the drops of water that will reach your feet when it will come to the shore are completely different. None of the particles that you see now 100 feet away from you are the drops, the, the, the particles that will touch you when that wave will come. But still for you it looks like the same wave, right? But it's not. It's totally else. It's something else. So also when you go into your office, you think that you are playing a role in that office and you're someone and you're getting in there with your perfume and, and with your haircut and whatever. In reality, there is something else going on. Your soul is moving in such harmony with a huge group of other souls that are going in the same direction and you don't get it because your eyes are out to the external world. You're stuck in the walls. You're stuck between people. You have your payroll that is supposed to come and is late and you haven't closed that deal yet and what's going to be. Your mind is not in the present. 
You don't live the moment. You live in your worries. You live in your fears. You live in your hopes and in your expectations. You live in an imaginary world of past that already passed and the future that will never take place in your life. And you're divided from reality that it's who that you're supposed to be right now when you are who that you are anyway. Under the supervision of the Almighty. That He knows all the thoughts and He runs all the systems and He's above the star system and the nature totally. But when you throw all the physicality away and it's not easy You need to have a daily meditation, a daily prayer, every time to remind yourself who am I and what's my mission and really I need to be honest and sincere and truthful. That's the key. The key is the truth. The key is not the Bible. The key is not Filim. The key is not Shabbos. It's not Kashrut. All of those things, Jewish people, guys, you're obligated. You are. I'm obligated too. We cannot run from that. We are obligated. Hashem knows why. Like that you have a brown hair. Hashem knows why. Jews are obligated to 613 commandments from the Bible and thousands and thousands of other by Chachamim. We are obligated. Close. Done. To all of those people that can't understand my speeches, I'm locked in, I'm with you guys, not going nowhere. Right? Okay? Accepted? Wonderful. Now, you're obligated to that. I need to clarify, there are some people that can't understand that I'm also as crazy and also religious. They can't accept it, they're losing their minds, like I told you. Rabbis that are flying out of the windows when I'm speaking. But. I have patience also for them to explain to them. So you're obligated. As a person, you have certain obligations that you're obligated to, and it's great. But who that you are is something else. You need to do everything that you do in life with a heart. To connect yourself to reality, it's to connect yourself to the truth. To connect yourself to the truth, like I said before, it's not only by keeping Shabbat or not keeping Shabbat, eating kosher or not eating kosher, and on and on and on. Connecting yourself to the truth, to the divine truth, is by not lying to yourself and to others. Is by being honest with yourself and with others is with working on your own attributes, on being polite, on being nice, not to stamp other people's head, not to do things behind other people's back, not to cheat, not to lie, not to betray, to be one with the source of good, with the Creator Himself. That is the only path. If you're Jewish and if you're not, If you're from a different nation, if you're a man, if you're a woman, if you're young, if you're old, if you're righteous, if you're all broken and and, and scarred, if you're a free person or a slave, the divine spirit means the access to the ancient knowledge of Kedem, of before time, of the earliest days, The access to all of that depends on the purity of your intention, to how connected you are with your heart to your daily actions, no matter which they are. Do it with a heart, with a happy heart, with a wishing soul, with a desiring soul to do good, to make a change in the world. And if you know how to dance, so I need someone to teach me because I'm a lousy dancer. Okay, thank you for listening to me. Now, please, you will stand up. You're next in line. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. The Muna Project Inc. is a nonprofit organization. 501c3. Please support us. Please help us. Your financial support and prayers 
will bring us out there. Thank you for coming. I start talking about money. <laughs> Rabbis are flying from the windows. <laughs> Our boys side, support us and help us. Every time that I, I told that thing once, there was a woman um, that she once decided to donate $5,000 to our organization, but she said, I want to donate that money only for Facebook advertisement. That's what she said. I want you to advertise with my $5,000 on Facebook. Okay, great. Why not? We don't care. It's good for us. And we were not hungry in that day, so it was okay. So when she donated that money, we created a certain video, a strong, short, powerful video clip, and we put all that $5,000 to advertise that specific video. Tell me how many people saw that video. 20 million people saw that video. Because of knowing how to advertise properly on Facebook, $5,000 bought 20 million people watched that video. Watched, not received it into their email. Watched it. Views. It's scary. I'm telling you, it's scary what that we can do with money today. How? The Creator made the redemption easy for us to bring. I'm telling you. So think wisely and your prayers will be answered shortly. Thank you very much. We hope you enjoyed this video very much. Please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit amuna.com. May your light shine always and your requests should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.